Hey guys, what's going on? We're going live with Amy from Denim Dudes. Let's hope uh, Amy is uh, able to join us. Um, Denim Dudes voted us amongst the 10 most sustainable denim brands in the world. And uh, there's Amy. Hey! Hello! How are you? Good, how are you? Well, I can't complain. It's, uh, it, it almost felt like a normal Friday here in, uh, in Amsterdam. I, uh, That's really good to hear. That is I, really good to hear. I don't want to, I don't want to be spoiled or something, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, back, back to the old days, so to say. So it's back to normal for you, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Right, so well, I, was, I was just about to introduce you. Um, I don't know if, um, if everyone knows you already, but I think they should. Um, uh, any, uh, if you allow me, uh, I'd like to say a few words about uh, who you are and how we've met, and, uh, and then uh, the stage is all yours. Um, Perfect, yeah, sounds great. So the reason that we have this talk is uh, because Denim Dudes, uh, in, in this case you, voted us amongst uh, 10 very beautiful, ambitious other brands that do something right in terms of sustainability. And I don't know about uh, Canada or the US, but you know, um, in the Netherlands, when journalists talk about sustainability, uh, for some reason, uh, it takes about two sentences before uh, genes are in a very bad corner. And it al yeah. always frustrates me because, you know, I understand what the challenges are and I also understand uh, what the general impression is of genes, but I also feel that genes do a lot of good, especially if, well, you do it the way we do it. And then, um, yeah, we got this amazing nomination, or uh, you at least chose us uh, amongst these other beautiful brands. And um, funny enough, the first idea that popped into my mind was we should ask uh, Amy who, uh, yeah, how this works. Uh, what do you think, uh, what do you see in us? But before we do so, I would love for you to introduce yourself uh, and, uh, and, and tell us all about your, uh, your own uh, blog and about your Instagram, because um, I'd like to ask everybody to follow you as well, except for Denim Blues, of course, after this uh, live session. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, so my name is Annie. For those that don't know you, I am the founder of Simply Suzette, and I created Simply Suzette to bridge the gap between the denim industry and the consumer. Because what I was finding is that there is such a disconnect between the consumer and the supply chain that most people have no idea what's going on behind the jeans that they're wearing, and let alone how much skill and and time goes into making them for them. So I wanted to kind of expose behind the scenes behind the scenes <laughs> to, to, to the average consumer, right? And, and show them the world that is out there. And, and that's actually, you know, they, they wear jeans every day and it spans across all cultures. I think it's such a global garment and so important for people to know that it is such a craft and skillful garment to make. And you know what? I think the denim industry works so hard at, you know, like disregarding those negative how we've been called the dirtiest industry in the fashion world. Like, I think it's so great to see the denim world working so hard to combat that. And, you know, I actually think that the denim industry collaborates more than the fashion industry in general. And it's so cool to see people come together and share their knowledge and just try different things. You know, you see sure. universities coming together with chemical companies to develop new technologies. And I just, I really love how much collaboration goes on in the industry. And I think it's important that other people know how hard people work on the yeah. sustainable alternatives. So that was the reason why I created Simply Suzette. And I wanted to give the chance for consumers to educate themselves and, you know, make an informed purchases on their own too. So that is me in a nutshell. <laughs> Hey, and um, the last time we spoke each other, uh, uh, it's about a year ago, I guess. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It was supposed to be only a few weeks ago, but then uh, Kingpins got cancelled, unfortunately. Um, yeah. And you were a little bit, I wouldn't say um, uh, depressed, but I found you a little bit, let's say, more negative than I, uh, I, I'm used of you. And um, I kind of asked you, like, uh, what's going on and uh, I felt that you were a little bit um, yeah um, in, in Dutch we say uh, you were you were uh, swimming against the tide um, how is that right yeah. now swimming against the tide I can I can see that one for sure and yeah honestly I think it was was it October I think yeah I think it was October that I last saw you and I mean at the time I was just 
you know, no one was really care. No one really cared. Like, I, I find that there is a flimsy relationship between education and action for consumers. And and as much as I was working so hard to try and put out all this information for people to learn from, I just I didn't feel like it was catching on. And I honestly only felt it catching on within like the past few months um, that there's been like a huge spike in people actually interested. I honestly think it's because of quarantine. People have the time to educate themselves and learn yeah. more about things. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was a little, a little um, discouraged last time because after sitting on some of the seminars and whatnot, I remember just being like, well, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. What are we supposed to do? So that was kind of like an aha moment for me back then being like, okay, the issues in the industry are extremely complex. Um, and you know, there's not an easy solution out there. There's not one, a one size fits all approach to creating a sustainable parachute or sustainable industry. There are trade-offs to everything. And that's kind of what I was learning in that moment. And I think that added to my depression. <laughs> well, but I also think that, you know, uh, in our business, uh, people tend to uh, to make things very complicated. And um, uh, I remember that after seeing you, uh, and also I talk about this a lot with uh, with the board of the House of Denim, that yeah. you know, for especially for consumers to understand what they have to do, I think we can limit it down to a few very simple uh, steps. And, and yeah. this is something I would like to speak to you about because uh, you made this beautiful list and. Um, yeah, we were lucky ones to be on it uh, with our brand Tenu. Um, yeah. So I was kind of wondering uh, what it is that you saw in our brand uh, that yeah made you choose us uh, part of being part of this uh, very special uh, group of ten. Yeah. Well, not only do I you are producing in a very responsible way, everything is hand cut and sewn using the most the highest quality fabrics in the world, basically, and you're working with organic and recycled cotton as well. I love that fact. So not only are you using sustainable alternatives to to production, you're also taking your customer through the entire life cycle of the product, which I think is extremely important going forward in order to move this into a circular one. I think it's vital to, to actually create a relationship with your customer rather than a transactional one. I would say most of your customers are almost like friends. You treat them like your friends. And so I think that's super important to create that relationship and you're offering free repairs throughout their, the whole life cycle of the product, helping them mend and repair when they need. People still, still don't believe that actually. They, uh, they think it's not true. This, this really? must be oh. marketing. <laughs> No way. That, no, I remember. I have a pair of two jeans, and I remember on the spot you guys had them for me for free because yeah. I, I you said something like, you know, they have to fit perfectly or else they're not yours. I think you said True. something like that. So you, you really make sure that the, the person, the customer buying your jeans, you know, needs them also, and then you're not just you're not just pushing sales. I think it's it's extremely vital to educate your consumer on the value behind your product too. And I think repairing is part of that. Um, I remember when we were back in October talking about Tanu, you asked, you were saying that you asked your customers, where was this, or do you know where this was made? Um, do you know what it's made of? And what are you going to do at the end of that with them? I think that is so cool because a lot of consumers, you know, they don't, they would never think of that last step. What are we going to do when I'm done? When I'm done with it, and that's so important. Like I, 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 I always tell people to donate if they can't, you know, get it to the proper recycling facility, or it's not. Yeah, or, or even, <laughs> even more simple, if if you have a brother or a sister or or a good friend that you can uh, make, um, uh, yeah, make uh, connect with your uh, with your garment. That's that's even easier, you know. And yeah, but, do a clothing swap. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I have, uh, I have a hard time getting rid of stuff, uh, but that's a different story, a different subject, different live session. But uh, um, what I, what I feel is that it's, it's beautiful, you know, to, to hand over something and to hand over the soul of a product. And, you know, it's, it's, it's almost something spiritual, but I also think, and I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that, that people kind of uh, need a little bit more knowledge and, and, and this, this job is in our hands, uh, in, in the business hands, um, to understand how much work and effort and love goes into every product, whether that's a t-shirt from, you know, the store uh, at the block or at the corner of the street, 
or a gene from Tenu. I think if people would read the book attached to that garment, I believe they would never throw it away. Because, yeah. you know, of that family in northern Italy that made that garment, of the Candiani family who sourced our fabric, which is completely microplastic free. You know, it's, I think yeah. if, if we would do a better job, and this is being critical to myself and, and to the industry, if we would do a better job in explaining this, I think uh, consumers will be much more likely to, to embrace those special products, don't you think? I agree. And, and you know, like, for example, it's my, I honestly, I've been trying not to say this out loud too much because I want to do a collaboration on this sometime, but it's my dream, I'll say it, it's my dream to see, like, a branded, a beautiful branded video taking you through from fat from seed to shelf, basically. So using blockchain, using um, technology like that to tell that story on a hang tag. I saw, and Avery Dennison makes these dissolvable hang tags too. So it'd be so cool to have that dissolvable tag, hang tag with a QR code. A consumer could come up to it, scan their camera on it, and watch how it was made from the cotton planted in the ground all the way to the end garment. That's there. awesome. I, I would, I think that would, I honestly think people would be interested. I mean, it would have to be a really short video, which would be tricky um, <laughs> to get all of that information to one video. But, but, but why should that be a short video? Well, I just think people have really short attention spans. <laughs> people don't like to stick around long or make things more inconvenient for themselves. Well, but, I think uh, we always say that you can't hurry craft, so... Uh, I believe that video that you're aiming for uh, should be, you know, that moment in peace that you actually take the time to, uh, to, to look at it and to experience it. Because at the end, I think, you know, it's the same for the products, I guess. Uh, when people stick to the short term products and to the in and out products, I think, uh, yeah, and, and they need that, um, that, that long read or that long watch to, uh, to actually... Uh, the emotion, exactly. yeah. But you know, I know you you work with like a denim sommelier in, in Kojima, right? Yeah. Or I think that that see that seeing that in video too would be so powerful. I think. Um, but I'm curious. I know I know you're always looking to better your products. I was wondering if there's anything on the come up that you're working on. Well, you know what is really important to me um, is that I feel that. You know, in, in the in the broad concept of sustainability, we still do a very shitty job. Um, I think what we do is far from sustainable, you know. Um, the only thing I embrace is the ambition to make it a lot more sustainable. And, uh, yeah, f uh, stupid enough, my attempt is already, uh, yeah, good enough to be in your lovely top 10. And that's kind of frightening to me because at the end of the day, I feel that uh, uh, we are we are uh, we are not close to real sustainability. I think one of my dear dear friends um, uh, is working uh, for a very big company, uh, uh, working on cradle to cradle genes, and you know, uh, I feel that there is a lot of steps to take. But whenever I'm I'm depressed and and telling my friend that. Um, um, uh, yeah, I'm not doing a good job. Uh, she tells me, listen, Menno, there's two very important things you always have to bear in mind as a start. Um, where, uh, try always to use organic. Try to add s as much post-consumer to pre-consumer uh, recycled stuff as you can possibly do. But first and foremost, make a beautiful product. Make a long-lasting product. Because yes. the quality of a good yeah. product and a good gene and the amount of time uh, you can wear it, in my uh, opinion, is still the most important uh, thing that kind of differs yeah, bad product from good product. Because at the end of the day, we need to start wearing our clothes. We need to yeah. st start wearing those jeans. You know, in yeah. the 1930s, a jeans would cost you a month's salary. So there was no person on earth that would fuck around with their jeans. They would hand stitch it, repair it, because God knows what would happen if they had to buy another one, because they, they simply couldn't. And now we're in this crazy world in which we can basically afford everything, anything, and 
all of a sudden the emphasis is much less on yeah loving and embracing that one single product yeah. and i feel if i if i uh, yeah listen closely to what my dear friend uh, uh, tells me all the time is you know you will not succeed uh, in everything in one step you know but always always try to make something that people will appreciate and that they will wear because that's the start mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent that i completely agree with that and i know you, you you asked me once or sometime like what if i could pick three most important aspects of to buy jeans my first one was make sure you're gonna wear it it's not an aspect that you're looking for but i think that is the most important thing you have to do when it is to ask yourself okay do i see myself wearing this in five years or i say five years i'd love to say 10 years but i know 10 years is a long time for me <laughs> so i say five years but but like are you gonna wear do you see yourself wearing this still in five years and are you gonna take care of it are you gonna repair it are you going to you know are you gonna love it will you love it so that's my first, that was like my first number one thing when buying a pair of sustainable jeans, because yep. you're right, like there's always trade-offs, right? Yep. What even is sustainable anymore? Every product is sustainable now. It's, it's really hard, and I, I think the, it's it's all about creating products that are going to last, yep. or that can be disassembled and brought back into the system. I, I think the second most important thing would be looking at the fibers you use, I actually posted this morning about cotton and someone commented Anna I think and she said that fibers should be like food a healthy array a, a healthy balance or some a healthy balanced diet and I loved that because I think it's true they, I, I hear so many you know I'm a fan of cotton alternatives too but I just been doing so much research on cotton lately because I'm a fan of its natural properties too. Exactly. But yeah. you know, there's so many controversial stats out there about it and water use and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so it's just but the second would be fiber for me because that's the bulk of where the impact comes from. I like to look for recycled content. I love recycled cotton. Yeah. Um, but I really so can can I ask you something about that second yeah. point because. Uh, what is your preference then? Is it is is it? Are you saying um, if you if you want to buy a jean, so first step was buy a jean that you can relate to for a couple of years, right? Yeah. Uh, and the second part you said um, a natural fiber. Is that is that what I caught right? I mean, I pr I prefer natural fibers. Yes. Like I I do not like I would say tensile or fibra. They are man made, but cellulosic fibers are great options. I really like them. I was going to mention them along with hemp um, recycled cotton and I, I'm still, I just, I'm not comfortable <laughs> voicing my opinion on cotton yet. I do like it, I just, I do, I like the balance idea. I think it needs to be a healthy mixture of all, of all fibers there. Recycled cotton, I really stay away from synthetics. I personally do not even like recycled polyester. Um, I think we should move away from our reliance on polyester and, and synthetics like that um just because of their micro pollution great solution to microplastics um and stretch fibers so that's me and he has come using um but yeah i i do i'm a fan of natural fibers i i personally am amy has asked us do you think that the genes of the future get recycled i i'm trying to ask researchers research and developers that question um, I personally, I don't know how to spin spin fibers and whatnot, but I love to see it. I know Tony Tunar from Kings of Indigo mentioned on a panel once. He's like, his dream would be one gene recycled for one gene made. I, I, I mean, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. We're seeing more and more that the contents of recycled cotton come up higher and higher. We just have to work at getting it, making the strain. But don't you agree that uh, I think it was the Dutch designer Borre uh, who said uh, in an interview once that recycling is basically cleaning up other people's mess. Um, I think there's a there, there's a lot of uh, trueness in that. Um, don't you feel that if we would buy smarter and everybody would actually uh, wear what they would uh, buy into, uh, there would be a lot less to recycle? Yeah, I do. I do think that. Um, but I think that there will always be some clothes. Like, I of think course. there will always be enough, yeah, to, to be able to, like, keep it going. But I, I like, overconsumption and overproduction is what I'd like to see first tackled um, in the industry. I think it's 
absurd that 30% of the clothing that is produced just doesn't get worn at all. And it's a waste of resources and it's a waste of time and money too. So I think we should all look to figure out how to solve those problems first. And obviously for the consumer overconsumption, I'm really encouraging to, you know, buy less juice well. I think that's vital. And I, I personally come down, well, I've been trying to kind of create a capsule wardrobe for probably like three years now. I'm almost there. I pretty much have a uniform for myself. And then I really like picking up vintage pieces here and there just to, you know, for, for fun. And honestly, I do actually, I treat myself when I come to Kingpins in Amsterdam. I come to your store and I usually buy something. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's a promise. And what about that third thing? Because you said something about you know buying into a gene that you're gonna uh, that you're gonna use for a long time. You said something about natural yeah. fibers or at least a fiber that is less harmful. Uh, what about yeah. that third aspect? The third I actually would like to say is actually just take, to take care of it. Um, I mean, there's two, I'd like to say two things. I would I I would love people to make sure that the brands are taking care of the people in their supply chains. I think that's another really important aspect. A lot of brands on that list are doing more to not only just pay a living wage, they're, they're really training and helping their employees in life. Um, but I think a really important aspect to note for consumers is that a, the bulk of the water usage is actually in the cons post, like post-consumer purchase. So it's when they're taking care and washing their jeans. So another reason to not wash your jeans as much, rather than just the sheer water consumption, is that they're going to last longer too if you wash yeah. them less. So I think, and I know for you, you guys do a lot of raw denim too. So most most people don't wash those ones. But I know a lot of people will. I see Kat on here right now. One of her pet peeves actually is when people think they can throw in a stretch jean in the dryer and think, okay, it's going to shrink back up. I, and that's terrible for your jeans. It's killing them, and it's making it's making you know. So I don't dry your jeans, and try to wash your jeans if you're doing it every two times right now. I'd say try and extend that to maybe ten times to start first. Yeah. I personally actually wash my jeans. I know that's gross to some people, but I air them out. I spray them with stuff. <laughs> I <laughs> with stuff. Okay, well. Uh... I, I we're gonna totally we're gonna let the, the followers guess what that meant, but uh, we'll get to that later. CMPD has an antibacterial spray. Right. Uh, yeah, we have to uh, we have to um, remind ourselves that uh, especially in these days, uh, yeah, hygiene is something uh, very uh, very sensitive. Um, yeah. I had a discussion. I'm in my store now at the moment, and I uh, I just uh, sold a very beautiful pair of. Uh, Momotaro jeans to a customer and um, we had this discussion about how the Japanese really believe that if you don't wash your garment uh, the toxics of your body and the sweat really uh, harms uh, the fabric so they believe that the long-lasting aspect is also uh, caught in you know uh, cleaning your jeans the right way so uh, it's kind of the opposite direction but, uh, That's interesting. yeah I've never heard that before so, but I can see that. I understand that. But it's, it's uh, but I'm. Th this is also why we prefer uh, cotton jeans over too much, um, you know, synthetic fibers. Because from what I learned, um, stretch leaves uh, yeah, small bits of uh, synthetic fibers in the water. You know, so basically you're polluting the water by washing that garment. So. Yeah, that could be another great reason, first of all, not to wash your jeans too much, but also to be mindful where it comes to uh, synthetic fibers, uh, yeah. as opposed to are, cotton ones. Yeah, there are some solutions, like wash, I know they're starting to look into washing machine solutions for microplastics, but there's a, um, a co company called Guppy Bag, and they, they're basically laundry bags that stop microplastics from entering the water system. Oh, that's system. awesome. Yeah, but actually I read this, I, I, I used to do like presentations on microplastics, but there's this stat in Toronto, it was put on, I think it was by our local news um, station, that says that Torontonians are consuming a credit card a week in microplastics, just because it's in our water systems, there's, oh, no, there's no avoiding it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really important, I think, for us to try and move away from synthetics and then and, and that being said i believe we should move away from recycled poly as well i know it's, it's great to be using what what's in this 
world and making use of waste, but I just think we need to reduce our reliance on it. Well, I mean, I think it all comes down to um, yeah, the challenge that we're facing, right? Uh, and this is also why I said with a little wink that we do a shit job being re uh, responsible and being sustainable because we are nowhere near uh, where we want to be. But uh, I guess uh, that's that's my simple life. I always like to use uh, silly sports metaphors, you know. I mean, you can't uh, start an Olympic journey with your golden medal, right? It's uh, it's for us. It's uh, there's a lot at stake. Uh, it's about um, uh, it's about. I think nudie jeans is is adding that not washing isn't so gross. It's nice. It's a uh, it's a lifestyle. That's that's much better. Thanks, uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Feel better about myself now. <laughs> exactly. So you're 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 backed by nudie, and I'm backed by nudie, by the way. It, I guess it's a little side note, but I mean, if my jeans uh, start to smell like wet dog, then uh, then I know I need a soak. That's kind of. Uh, <laughs> But uh, what I wanted to say is that, you know, I think what we should admit that we are even we are not even close to something that does that does well, you know, and the most important thing for us is to acknowledge that we are active in a dirty business and we need to grow up. We need to rethink everything. And the discussion that we have uh, internally here is, you know, we feel that if we educate the brands and uh, or educate the consumers that buy the brands, the brands have to follow. And this is also why, you know, I feel that with Tenu, with our label, uh, we are creating media to explain the people what can make a difference. And this is not entirely, you know, to make them buy into our Tenu jeans. I mean, if they love it, that's, that's, that's beautiful. But what I want to do is endorse the idea of, of loving your product, loving your gene. And, um, if, if attached to that ambition uh, is a lot of good to the planet, I mean, that's two birds and one stone, if I'm not correct. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that, you know, no one's 100% sustainable. I, I, I truly believe that, you know, you're always looking at the better alternatives out there too. You're not just set, okay, we're using organic cotton, I'm using 20% post-consumer recycled cotton. You're continuing to look into the alternatives and I also think what's important now is measuring the alternatives because I think I think that sometimes the sustainable solutions that are thrown out there are quick are, and people are quick to jump on and I think people are starting to now realize that they might not be as sustainable as they were tutored to be in the beginning. So I think it's really important to measure what people, what your brand is doing and the impacts that they actually have and seeing where the inefficiencies lie because like I said, there's always a trade-off to using something. Production in general is not sustainable. So mean, it's just, yeah, yeah, but that's, that's a very important acknowledgement that every product has a footprint, you know, and this is why I have um, yeah I always wonder you know what happened to those old cars of those people riding all those beautiful Tesla cars you know probably their car wasn't like done yet you know what I mean so it's 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 also that balance you know but if I yeah. go back to 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 our products then you know I had a customer the other day and he came in and he was like uh, he was a little bit shocked he said you know, Menno, I've been wearing your white t-shirts uh, from Tenu now for, let's say, uh, uh, 15 months. And I don't need a new one yet. Uh, this cannot be a, a business model, dude. And, um, sorry, uh, my connection is just off. And then I said, well, uh, in a way, I understand where you're coming from. But at the, on the other hand, you might not be buying a new white t-shirt right now. But you are telling all your friends in the bar that you found this idiot who makes T-shirts that will last you for three years, and then they will probably buy a T-shirt too. So that that yeah. evens everything, right? Yeah. So it's uh, it's also about having you know the faith in in what we are doing and that that we're onto something something important, and then with the helps of our mills like Candiani or Orta, uh, Orta creates this indigo passport. So besides the fabric, you can see uh, what happened in the whole coloring process. Candiani is, is really, you know, uh, helping us to find step-by-step uh, step the right fabrics, uh, even with a custom salvage that creates 
not only like a unique to new DNA, but also they help us to understand what the impact is of our choices that we make. So a big shout out to my friends uh, in the Milan area, because uh, without, without those guys and with the knowledge of that, that kind of people who've been running around in the business for many, many years, it would be impossible, you know? Our mentor, Marco Bonzani, who showed us like all the, the small uh, factories and now grew with us into bigger factories to make sure that we can maintain the philosophy of the brand. I think yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a big mutual, um, let's say, intention that creates at the end of the day something that, that is better today than it was yesterday. Yeah, I think that's such a great point note right now too especially in this time we've seen so many cancellations and supplier you know relationships kind of go to shit and I think it's so important that you actually you're working together with them to grow your brand and grow that themselves as well it's actually a partnership not just you know purely transaction in my make my line of jeans. I really think it's important to be helping your suppliers too because they they might not know what to do better too. You might be helping them be more sustainable as well, be more responsible or better their products and the quality of their products. So I think it's really important to be, you know, working with your suppliers that way. And that's another reason why I really admire to do. It's about it's I think it's about the human connection too that you create. That's a really important side to it. Because I think when all the talk about sustainability and circularity within the past couple of years, people forgot about the human side of things for a bit. Absolutely. And I think it's very, yeah, and I think it's so important. Like, you know, like I said, the disconnect between the industry and the consumer. People have no idea that the gene might have, you know, passed through 10 different people, maybe like 40 different people, right? Don't you, don't you feel that's also because uh, brands have been hiding that whole process? I, I honestly yeah. don't understand why people are so surprised that we at Tenu uh, just give away factory names, we give away uh, our fabric suppliers because we are proud yeah. of them, you know, we are proud to work with them and then at the end of the day the consumer will be proud. But I mean, it's, it's hard for me to point fingers towards consumers because at the end of the day I believe that we did a shitty job giving yeah. them the right information. Yeah, well I, yeah, like I personally felt like I had been lied to my whole life up until a couple of years ago, being like, well I had no idea, it was it was in, I think, I, a few years ago I watched The True Cost and River Blue and I was like, I had no idea, like I just had zero clue that this is what was happening behind the, behind the scenes, and yeah, I think brands did, did, I think brands did, it, did, did hide it, but I also think some didn't know and weren't trying to hide it. Um, they just, you know, the com the complexities of the supply chain and subcontracting, co subcontracting. I think not everybody had bad intentions, but some obviously did. Yeah, but I think uh, not knowing is a is a very a very bad uh, thing to hide behind. Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. It's it's about wanting to know, and I think my our whole life is all about curiosity, and you know. Yeah. Uh, your interest in what happens if you indeed um, like cancel this order what the domino effect will be and in the whole food chain um, yeah. but but I think really uh, uh, any that that we should go back to the simple things you know like you said buy a good product buy a product that you love buy a product yeah. that you feel is made out of good uh, substances and then, yeah. you know, if you don't love it so much anymore, uh, give it to the next lover, you know? Yeah. And then yes. you're, you're, you're doing fairly simple things, but um, they make major impact, I believe. And um, yeah. what, one thing that I wanted to ask you is, were there any similarities within the 10 brands that you uh, researched? Uh, was there something they all did right and maybe they all did wrong? <laughs> I'll do it wrong. That's funny. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to call. I don't think anyone's doing anything wrong. Um, I know I do. I do a lot of things <laughs> wrong, but uh, we'll get there. <laughs> it's just it's a journey, right? Like it's a process. That's why I don't. I mean, we're all we're on, we're all on this journey together. We're all trying to better the industry and the world. Um, but I, I just I do think that the common theme between everybody on the list is that they're continuing to 
develop new alternatives and, and looking at the trade-offs. I also think that all of the brands give back in a, in a way that outside of their business, which is really important to me. I like seeing that. Um, they're not only just focusing on the product, they're focusing on their the initiatives that they're giving back or the education side of things too. Yeah. So it's not only about producing a sustainable product, it, it's, it's the brands that are going above and beyond. I'm a common theme, I think. I'm trying to get my screen back to you, but uh, it's... Uh, ah, here I am. I there lost you, you. There you are. And, and, yeah, I think and what about those similarities? Um, pardon? Sorry. What about those similarities between the good things uh, within the list? You know, every brand is doing a, some different type of initiative. A lot are doing ones with water. Um, but I think a lot of them are thinking back to basics, like you said. And, and I've, I've been thinking about this a little bit, thinking, you know, we're taught as kids to, you know, if you take something, put it back, treat people the way you want to be treated, reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> like, those are things we've been taught literally our whole lives, and it's, those are the values that we're supposed to stay with us. And I think a lot of brands have lost those values. And I think those are the common themes between these these top 10 brands. They're they're making sure what they're taking, you know, is being taken in a responsible way, making sure their outputs are not harmful to the planet as well. They're trying to reduce as much as they can, re reuse with fibers as much as they can. And a couple of the brands actually do take back programs on them, but, you know, they're looking at the whole life cycle of the product rather than just the linear model of it. Um, and reduce, re yeah, and treating people like the way you want it to be treated. I think it's super important that people are not only only focusing on the first tiers, or I think you need to be focused on tier one, two, and three, and four, even with your with the employees that are in your supply chain. So, yeah, those are the common things I would say. And I also think that you know uh, brands have to have the luxury to be able to collaborate with their production channels, you know, because. Uh, I'm a lucky bastard that uh, uh, in Italy, uh, also in Japan, uh, I get to work to, together closely with my factories and, you know, I challenge them, they challenge me. But yeah. I feel that, you know, um, that's also a joint effort. And, and to your point of recycling jeans and, and taking it back in a cycle as a brand, I think I was always inspired by uh, Jean Tuitou, what he did with APC. Um, I think the Butler program really was for the start for me um, that people actually proved, you know, that that your your beaten up gene could serve a beautiful purpose for someone who is not really looking for something rigid. And, and then, of course, I, I ignore the whole vintage game that we got from Levi's and all the other big ones. But I think yeah. APC was the first modern brand uh, that actually yeah, made me buy their second hand jeans at a higher yeah. price than the jeans that I would normally buy in their regular line, which is pretty amazing to me. Yeah, I mean, I personally love like the look of worn in jeans already. I was saying, I was, I was having a conversation about this, but I would pay more. I would pay more for them. Sure. I pay more for vintage jeans sometimes if I, like you can't, you can't replicate them, you know? So, yeah. I, I, and I think they're beautiful when they're worn in. And, and I think it's a different, it kind of is a different customer too sometimes. So you can even create more business that way. Well, I wanted to ask you something, Annie, because um, it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's fantastic to understand a little bit more about how you evaluated all those brands in the top 10. And it's, um, it makes me kind of shy to understand what you thought about Tenu because uh, it means a great deal to us, of course especially because we're just uh, launching the brand and, and showing it to the public outside of our Tunidinim stores. Um, but I want, what I wanted to ask you uh, in addition is, uh, is there a possibility that uh, a little, uh, a couple of weeks from now, we could maybe talk again and uh, we, could, we could come up with a set of very simple, like almost cartoonish uh, things for people to to um, yeah um, to think about when they buy jeans because I feel yeah. that if if you and I and all the others in this business uh, do a better job in informing the consumers, uh, we might be able to make a change too. So besides making good products and in your case, uh, you know, advocate the good, I believe that uh, we might can 
come up with something like a handout or an idea that that can make people uh, start thinking when they actually buy a G? Would you would you be open to that? I'm very open to that. Like a guy, oh, like ZDHC put out that chemistry for dummies or something. Like something like buying jeans for dummies or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I love that. I would be absolutely open to another conversation. Because then I, I think at the end of the day, what I also uh, acknowledge and, and uh, what I find out almost every day, every week, is that in fact I am a dummy too, you know, because we learn every yes. day. And, yep. you know, uh, it's a good thing because we're ambitious and we want to serve the good and we, we, we want to um, we want to do better. But uh, yeah. it would be great to uh, to do another dialogue on that, and uh, and maybe we can uh, we can actually put some uh, a physical thing in the Tunisian stores to uh, to guide people and, uh, and and make them only buy great stuff. I love that. I would love to. Yes, let's work on that for sure. Fantastic. It's Any, um, I, I'm going to wish you a wonderful weekend. I really want to thank you for your time. Uh, oh. Ooh, and thank you to Denim Dudes for hosting this as well. I, I I did not I you know I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity to be on Denim Dudes. So Denim and I'm Dudes very, is uh, I had a chance to chat with you. For sure, no I'm, Denim Dudes. Uh, big <laughs> shout out to them. <laughs> but yeah, next next maybe in October I'll we'll be face to face in real life. Fantastic, and, and you better uh, you, you you take uh, Amy and, and Sam because I, I miss you guys. Where are you? <laughs> Amy is here. I think I saw Sam maybe too, but yeah, I know we we all miss everyone. I miss, I miss everyone. It's sad, but it's, it was so nice to get to see your face and chat with you right now. Same here. <laughs> same here. You hang in yeah. there. I love uh, following you, and uh, thanks for your inspiration. And hopefully, we talk uh, to each other soon, and uh, we're gonna make something beautiful out of this. Perfect. Amazing. Have I will talk weekend. to you soon. Bye. Guys. Bye. Thanks for